and welcome to this online workshop on anxiety and parenting, looking especially at how to manage anxiety in the early years. My name is Ruth and along with my colleague Anna, we hope to give you an understanding of what anxiety is and how it works and offer you a few ideas that you can try to include in your parenting style to support your child to be braver and less anxious. Just to let you know, we work as part of Barnet Integrated Clinical Services. And more specifically, we are children and young people's psychological well-being practitioners. And here's a little bit of detail about what we do. We work with children and young people who are feeling stressed, anxious, worried and low in mood. But we also work with parents of younger children who are experiencing anxiety or behaviour difficulties. So let's find out a bit more about anxiety. A lot of anxiety around at the moment and we know that common triggers for anxiety are things that are ambiguous, new and unpredictable. Does that sound familiar? No wonder a lot of us are feeling anxious at the moment. Now, anxiety and worry are a normal part of life. In the right dose, it can get us up and active, but too much can be overwhelming. So how do we know if anxiety is a problem for our child? Here are some questions to ask yourself. How strong is their worry? Is it becoming hard for them to manage? Is it stopping them from doing what they need to do? Are they miserable as a result? Is their anxiety getting in the way of what you need to do? Anxiety is made up of three things. Physical sensations in the body, anxious thoughts and anxious behaviour. The physical sensations of anxiety are caused by something called the fight or flight response, sometimes referred to as the fight, flight or freeze response. To understand this better, it's worth taking a brief trip back in time to think about one of our early ancestors spotting a large angry bear. When faced with this kind of danger, it's really helpful to be prepared. And this is what our body does for us. For example, rapid breathing to get oxygen into our bodies. Our heart beats really fast to pump blood to our arms and legs to help us run faster or hit harder. And our stomach works overtime to quickly digest and eliminate food. It kept our ancestors safe and it can keep us safe too, but it feels horrible. This chart helpfully translates how the fight or flight response causes the symptoms of anxiety. People often underestimate just how physical anxiety is. In fact, the physical symptoms of anxiety are often misinterpreted as physical illnesses, such as heart attacks or tummy aches. As I mentioned earlier, our thoughts also play a role in anxiety. This little cartoon neatly illustrates how what we think is a threat can make us feel anxious, even if there is no real danger. So anxiety is the response to something perceived as dangerous. How we think can also affect the way we feel and how we think can affect our behavior. In fact, it is often the behaviour part of anxiety that we notice first in young children. Anxious children will often seek reassurance, avoid certain situations, complain about the symptoms of anxiety such as tummy ache, dislike trying new things, get upset easily, avoid talking or making eye contact, or they can be very clingy. So for the next part of this workshop, I will hand over to my colleague Anna 
to talk about some of the things that we as parents and carers of young children can do to help. We're now going to see what is it that you can do to support your child coping with their anxiety. Find out more about your child's fears and worries. Sometimes it is difficult for parents to ask questions about the child's fears as they can be scared of the answers themselves. However, being curious about what is it that's worrying your child will help you understand what is he or she thinking, what is he or she predicting will happen in a particular situation. By asking these questions, you will be teaching your child that it's okay to talk about what makes us scared. The more these strategies practice, the more you are supporting your child to reflect about their fears and come up with coping thoughts, reducing the need to seek reassurance externally. Some of the questions that you could ask are, why are you feeling anxious? What is it about this situation that is making you worried? What do you think will happen? What's the worst and the best thing that can happen? What would you tell a friend in the same situation or what would your friend tell you? Notice that these are all questions that are considered opening questions so that you don't condition the child to give an answer. Encourage brave behaviour or independent behaviour. You can start by agreeing some common tasks around the house that your child can help with. The same sense of competency in performing these tasks independently will hopefully be transferred to master their own fears in a more independent way. Be confident in your child and let them know that you believe they can do it. Be tolerant and respect when they struggle. Allow and encourage them to be independent and don't jump in to do things for them. Give them choices. Would you like to do a ham sandwich today or a cheese sandwich? Instead of just choosing not to do something and avoiding. Show them what to do if they have never done it before. Slowly build up on what your child can do. Praise your child for trying and not only when they have mastered the task. Share your own struggles and your coping strategies to overcome them. Help your child to think in a more adaptive way. Remember, ask your children questions so that they can contemplate different conclusions themselves instead of just coming up with more adaptive thoughts for them. Here is an example of an anxious thought and how to think in a more adaptive way. So the anxious thought would be something bad will happen to mom when I'm at school. The child will therefore feel scared or anxious or worried, have tummy aches, belly aches. In terms of behavior, they can avoid school, have a tantrum or start crying. A more helpful thought would be the first day of school is easy and I will make lots of friends. He will then feel excited, energized and happy and he would go to school, smile and say hi to other friends. These are called the seven thoughts of confident children. These are other adaptive thoughts that might help your children when facing anxious situations. Remember, the more the coping thoughts are generated by the children themselves, the more prone they will be to remember them when facing anxious situations. The world is a pretty safe place. I can cope with most things. Bad things don't usually happen to me. Bad things don't pop up out of the blue. I have some control over the things that happen to me. People are pretty nice, really. Other people respect me. Practice problem solving. These are some practical strategies to help your children managing anxiety. The first one is called the worry tree. This will be helpful for those children who tend to worry a lot or have many worries. You can go through this strategy with your children and make them use it in a more independent way whenever they understand what is it that they need to do. The first thing to do is to become aware of what is it that's worrying your child. The second thing is to understand if there is anything that can be done about it. If not, they can let the worry go by distracting themselves. 
If there is something that they can do about the worry, then it's time to make a plan. If they can do something about it now, prompt them to do it and then let the worry go. If nothing can be done at the moment, then they should decide when would be the best time to cope with this and let the worry go. In this case, they can write the worry down, put it in a so-called worry box and come back to it when the time is appropriate. Most of the times, children find out that what they wrote is no longer a worry when they come back to the worry box. You can also support your child to make a problem-solving will. Identify the problem and let them come up with as many solutions as they can. And remember, feeding the dog with schoolwork is a solution. After brainstorming, help them to assess the pros and cons of each solution. Also, they will need to assess if the solution is something doable or not. At the end, they should rate each solution to choose which one will they try out first. If that doesn't work, then they can simply continue to the next best rated solution. In order to cope with anxiety, it is very important that your child learns how to relax. These are some activities that promote relaxation and you can even do them together. Try to practice some yoga and meditation. Try to exercise and prompt your children to exercise more. Progressive muscle relaxation is another strategy that you can use, as is belly breathing. Let's talk about some of the things you should consider when managing your child's anxiety. You should be aware of your own anxiety responses and those of others around the child. Let's suppose you are scared of dogs and a dog is approaching your child. Are you going to let your child stroke the dog or are you going to stop them from doing it and say that dogs can bite and can be dangerous? Be aware that your child might well notice when you're anxious. The child can learn that if the parents or other significant people are scared of something, it is because it is dangerous and the child must be scared about it as well. Try and think of ways to manage your own anxious feelings. And if it, this is not possible, try to problem solve another way around it. Can your partner or a friend help out? Remember to take some time to pamper yourself and do things that you enjoy and bring you a sense of happiness and relaxation. It is important to feel well within yourself so that you can have the strength to support your children coping with their anxiety. Take some time to meditate, have a bubble bath, to read a book, go for some exercise, walk your dog, listen to some music or anything else that you enjoy doing. And before we finish, here are some books that might help you. Some are for you to read and feel equipped with strategies to support your children overcoming anxiety. Others have some practical exercises that your child can go through. There are also some stories that you can read together about anxiety and how to overcome it. We would also like to leave you some apps, a video and a CD. These are helpful resources to go through with your children and these might help them cope with anxiety and their struggles. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for your time. We hope we were able to help you and we hope you now feel equipped with some strategies to help your children coping with anxiety. We know that you might still have some questions, so please feel free to email us your questions and we will try our best to give you some answers. Thank you very much. Take care.